the Louvre in Paris, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and one you probably haven't heard of, Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. It's perhaps an unexpected spot for a first-rate art collection, but that's the museum's goal. And as Jeffrey Brown reports as part of our American Creator series, it's a mission that's helping to reshape the entire region. Hey, tell me about these shoestrings. What about these shoestrings are you noticing? It's not uncommon to see school groups at a museum, but the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, sees part of its very mission as serving young people in this largely rural area who might never otherwise get to a major collection. This class was from Pierce City, Missouri, a town of about 1,300. It's just 60 miles from here, but the trip was a first for many, including fifth grader Lainey Scosi. It's a small town and most of the time it's like, okay, we're staying here, not going to Arkansas and coming to something like this. It's cool. Yeah. There's a lot of cool, fun art here and it's just beautiful. In a lot of respects, we are worlds away. Laura Still is Scosi's art teacher. Some of them get to travel to places like larger areas like Kansas City, and a lot of them do go to Springfield, but there's quite a few of them. They just, they've got parents that are hardworking parents and don't have a lot of time to, to take them to places like this. Crystal Bridges, designed by architect Moshe Safti, was founded by Walmart heiress Alice Walton, who purchased the art and opened the museum in her hometown in 2011. It sits on 120 acres of land in the Ozarks, surrounded by more than three and a half miles of sculpture-dotted nature trails. Admission is free. The collection highlights from many periods of American art. These are iconic objects that are part of an American Art 101 class. Mindy Bisa has been a curator here for three and a half years. The first and foremost thing we look at when we're thinking about art is the best. So we the best. the best. Okay. So it's a high bar. It's a high bar, but that I think goes to the mission of what we're doing. It's not making art, any art accessible for all. It's making the best of American art available and accessible for all. One example, Asher B. Durant's Kindred Spirits. Walton bought the painting from the New York Public Library for a reported $35 million, stirring controversy in traditional art centers. It was just part of the skepticism and concern the museum drew early on about Walton's deep pockets and where this new collection was being housed. Seven years in, the museum continues to make its case. Attendance is up, a total of nearly four million to date, and the curators are pushing the envelope more than they dared in the past. The museum recently unveiled a redesign of its early American galleries. If access is our mission, then we need to be accessible and open, maybe even questioning that established story of American art and making room for more interpretation and more stories. To that end, works from different eras hang side by side in a kind of conversation. An iconic George Washington painted by Charles Wilson Peale next to a contemporary video portrait of a North Dakota oil fracking worker by Susie J. Lee. This is the kind of subject that would have never been painted in the 19th century. Right. And so here in the 21st you century... You mean like a, a, a common man, a, a worker? A common man, yeah. a worker, wouldn't have been given this, you know, grandeur, this attention. Wall texts now tie older artworks to contemporary issues. For George Pettit's 1865 painting of Union refugees in the Civil War, a digital label draws a direct connection to today's Syrian refugee crisis. Another part of the new American story being told here emphasizes Native American art. Bobby Martin, a local artist, professor, and member of the Muscogee Creek tribe, served as an advisor. He pointed to a colonial portrait set next to native moccasins and cradles. It expands the story. It's not just about a European sensibility of here's what people look like in 1600s or whatever. Here's also what was going on at the same time. So it, it brings in, again, a whole other thread, a whole other story that is often set apart. 
The museum's contemporary galleries have also expanded, with works by artists like Titus Kafar, Vanessa German, and Ruth Asawa. Earlier this year, the museum hosted the American debut of the exhibition Soul of a Nation, which showcased works by black artists in the 1960s through 80s. Lauren Haynes is the curator for contemporary art. I think a lot of museums all across the world sometimes underestimate their audiences or think they know what people want to see or think they know what people want to engage with. But one of the things, particularly working in contemporary art, is you're always asking people to push boundaries and yeah. to think a little differently. So to me, this feels right at home here in Bentonville. Now Bentonville itself is pushing boundaries. Home to the original five and dime Walton store and eventually Walmart's headquarters, Bentonville's always been a company town. It still is, but with crystal bridges and big investments from a younger generation of Waltons, the town has taken on a new look practically overnight. Its downtown is now filled with street art, trendy restaurants, and bike shops that feed a burgeoning mountain biking scene. The population here in northwest Arkansas is one of the fastest growing in the country. I mean, this was all here when Mike Abb grew up in Bentonville yeah, before moving to Austin, Texas for more than a decade. He came back in 2013 and now works for the Waltons. We had a leadership team at Walmart and the corporate offices mm -hmm. that were coming from urban cores and they were missing what they had in larger cities. They were missing that cultural momentum that they were getting out of the coast. But Ab acknowledges the extreme growth and its accompanying rising costs can cause tensions. Well, they're afraid their identity is being taken away from them or that they're just holding space for a new future resident. We are actively trying to change that mentality. As for Crystal Bridge's next venture, it's turning an old craft cheese factory into a venue for contemporary exhibitions, music, theater, and film. The 63,000 square foot space called The Momentary is set to open in 2020. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Bentonville, Arkansas.